This actually comes out of Africa. It's an old tale. It's told by the Maasai and the Zulu and the Ashante, and they all have their, their own version of it. But this is about how mankind was almost destroyed, but not quite. It turned out that the great creator God created the land and then populated it with all sorts of plants and all sorts of creatures and told them to each go out and find their own place in the world. One of these creatures was a strange little critter called man. And as time went on, the great God started to hear a lot of complaints and virtually all of them from all the different animals was about this creature called man. <laughs> and finally, he had heard so many complaints, he decided to hold a great council. So he came down and he sat in his great throne and he gathered about him representatives of all of the different creatures in a circle and said, what, what, what is the problem here? And the zebra and the antelope stepped forward and said, well, there are these beautiful green fields that, that would be great fodder for us, except that man puts fences around them so we can't get at them. And man said, well, I cannot wander as far or as quickly as, as these animals can, so I have to plant my own food and guard it for myself. And the elephant said that, well, man is diverting water from the river and uh, there isn't enough left for us. Man said, well, how am I supposed to water my crops? And other animals said, man is, is not fair when he is hunting. He doesn't just chase us down. He sets snares and traps and this, this is cheating. And man says, well, I don't have claws and teeth and, and I can't run as swiftly as the rest of you. Uh, how am I supposed to hunt? Well, this went on and on and on. <coughs> Eventually, the great God said, all right, I have heard enough. Every time you bring up something, man has an excuse for it. So here is my judgment. If there are any two animals amongst you who will speak in favor of man, I will let him survive. If not, I shall wipe him from the earth. And so man stepped out in the center of the circle and says, who will speak for me? And immediately the dog walked out, sat down beside man, said, I, I will speak for man. Uh, I find that eating his scraps from his, his, uh, his table is much preferable and easier than hunting for myself. And sleeping in his hut safely is much more desirable than sleeping out under a bush where I could be suddenly surprised and eaten. And he gave a meaningful look at the leopard, tried very much to be innocent. But... <laughs> of course, everyone knew the leopard's propensity for loving dog meat. And so the dog said, for all of these reasons, I will speak for man. And man said, well, there you have it. Who else will speak for me? And there was silence. And now man looked around the circle and said, surely there, there is another amongst you that, that would speak in my favor. Nothing. And after a very long pause, finally the great God stood up and he said, I believe that the decision has been made. And he stretched out his hand. And just as he was about to wipe man from the earth forever, this very tiny voice came from the very back of the circle and it said, wait, I will speak for man. Yes, he has his problems. Yes, he has his bad habits and his peculiarities, but in his own way, I find him useful. So yes, I will speak for man. And the great God lowered his hand and thus mankind was saved. Now, I am certain that you would like to know who was that tiny voice. Well, is it not obvious? That tiny voice was the mosquito. <laughs> <laughs> now, the storytellers of Africa says there's a moral to this story, but you have to figure it out for yourself. <laughs>